Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to the Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson, and I am Greg Anderson. Hey, today I want to talk about quartz accuracy, and I've done some tests on these Casio watches just to see how accurate they really are. Now, what is quartz? You've heard this before when, you know, you've, you go to buy a clock or a watch, it says it's a quartz clock or a, you know, quartz watch. Okay, quartz, th here's, a, here's a chunk of quartz that I got. Okay, this is a mineral. It's made up of uh, silicon and oxygen and, well, it's, it has certain electrical properties which makes it useful for timekeeping circuitry in electronics. Okay, quartz is stable for, for those sorts of purposes. Also, quartz is pretty common, pretty abundant on the earth. That means it's easy to get and pretty much um, pretty cheap to use in manufacturing. So uh, it's been, you know, sometime in the last 50 years or so that quartz has become much more common in household items like clocks and watches. So if you look back before the 1970s, most wristwatches were mechanical, wind them up, you know, every day or, or whatever. Um, but then if you look, you know, into the 1980s and beyond, most wristwatches are quartz. Okay, so a little piece of quartz inside the circuitry is uh, oscillating at a frequency of, I'm told, 2 to the 15th power. That's 32,768 cycles per second if, you've, if you're quick with your math, okay? So that's how many oscillations that the circuit is counting, and each, one, uh, each time it gets to 32,768, it advances by one second. Now, I've got a bunch of uh, watches here. Most of them are Casio watches. And well, these watches run on quartz circuitry. So they got a little quartz crystal in there and they're oscillating and they're counting and they're keeping time based on the quartz. And well, quartz is not perfect. So, you know, it's, it's, the time is not going to be perfect. And in fact, Casio these days publishes in the instructions, the owner's manual for each of these watches, what is their predicted accuracy? Uh, you know, is it going to gain or lose a certain number of seconds per month? And so you'll find that right there in the owner's manual. And according to the specifications on most of these watches, they should be accurate to within 20 seconds per month. Some of them, uh, the specifications say plus or minus 15 seconds per month. And some of the le less expensive ones, like this one here, uh, are said to be accurate to within 30 seconds a month. So one second per day. Um, you know, not too bad. If you're, if you're resetting your watch every six months because of daylight saving time, or, you know, twice a year, let's just say, for daylight saving time, then being off by a few seconds a month probably won't bother you very much. But of course, for a guy like me, <laughs> the good timekeeper, I want the watches to be even more accurate than that. So what you can do is you can just, uh, you know, every few days or however often you think it's necessary, just go in and press a couple of buttons and, and just uh, you know, reset the seconds to zero based on some other clock reference you have, either something from the internet or you've got a clock with radio control or, or something like that on it. Uh, a lot of these watches I have in this collection here do have built-in atomic time receivers. Uh, and a lot of these, Casio has what they call multiband six. So depending on where you are, uh, that watch will try to receive the atomic time information and update itself every day. However, even with those watches that have the built-in atomic time reception, most of the time they are relying on quartz accuracy just for normal operation and maybe just once a day, if they can set themselves, then they'll do that and they'll stop. And that saves battery power. So you don't have to fire up that uh, little receiver inside of it 24 hours a day. Just, you know, once a day, it'll check some of these. If it doesn't work the first time, it'll try the next hour. And, and this is the kind of thing that keeps most of these accurate. And then some of these watches, they don't have the built-in atomic time reception at all, like this one. So therefore, it, it's always going to rely on the, the built-in quartz accuracy. All right, so I decided to run a test and uh, set all of these watches to the correct time, right down to the second, using some atomic time reference that I had. Or in the case of the watches that had that built in, I made sure that uh, they all were able to receive and, and, and correct themselves with atomic time information uh, on, on that day that I started my experiment. 
Okay, the experiment was how accurate will, will they be after one month of no adjustments, okay? See, the ones that have the built-in atomic time reception, you can, you can turn that feature off. And so that's what I did. One month, see how they are at the end of the month. And the results I found were quite interesting to me. Now I have a couple of older watches, over 30 years old, and I expected them to perhaps not be as accurate as the newer ones for two reasons. One, the manufacturing has improved over the years. So back when they were made, maybe the tolerances and you know, the specifications weren't quite as precise as they are today. And also because as something like a, an electronic device like this gets older, it is not unexpected that the accuracy could change as, as they get older. So I figured the older ones, uh, we're gonna have you know, the, the, the least accurate watches. And um, that was correct. So here's a Casio watch from the mid to late 1980s. And in one month, it was off by 51 seconds. Uh, okay, that's not great. That's more than one second a day uh, of, of drift. Okay, but uh, I, I was able to look online and find what I think was an accurate owner's manual for that watch. And it didn't specify what they thought the accuracy would be. So given the age and given that Casio never said how accurate it should be, 51 seconds, I sort of knew having had that watch for 30 years that it drifted you know, significantly. So that was the worst one out of, out of these that I tested. Now I've got another one from Casio and um, well, this one I got mm, just under 30 years ago in the early 1990s. And it, I did find an owner's manual online that said it should be accurate to within 15 seconds a month but it didn't do quite that well. I found that it was off by about 37 seconds after one month of no adjustments. So again, I kind of expected that, but mm, I'm, well, anyway. Okay, the next one was off by, again, 37 seconds. And this is an older watch. I, I wasn't able to find a manual, so I don't know what it's supposed to do. Now here's one that is about 13 years old. And I did find a manual. It says it should be accurate to within 15 seconds a month. My actual results were it was off by 22 seconds. But now this one does have a built-in atomic time receiver. So most of the time where I am, it'll correct itself every day. And I wouldn't have ever noticed that it could be off by 22 seconds in a month because I don't let it go that long without automatic adjustment. Uh, so far, all these watches that I've told you about run a little bit fast. So I only had one out of all the ones I tested that actually ran slower than normal. Uh, all the rest of these, by the end of the month, they were uh, ahead of what the real time would be. Okay, here's one that, uh, again, I couldn't find any, any claims on how accurate it should be, 21 seconds. And then here's one, okay, uh, we start to get into the kind of the modern era. This watch I got less than 10 years ago. I really like this one. It's said to be accurate to within 20 seconds. I measured it at 19 seconds. Okay, so getting close there. Okay, here's one that, uh, I, well, I think this one should have been accurate to within 15 seconds and it was only accurate to within 19 seconds. Uh, this one is from Seiko. Uh, this one is from 1983 or 84, I think is when I got it. So um, it was off by 18 seconds, uh, a watch that is, uh, you know, 30, well, 35 years old at least, um, not bad. Okay, now from this point onward, every watch I tested is definitely within the specifications that uh, Casio said it should be. So I, I, I guess I should kind of group them together at this point. Because what I found was that even though a, a watch might have the same module as another watch, and it might even be made in the same factory. Uh, it may, may even look the same. I have a few watches here that are duplicates. They look just like each other. They did not keep time at exactly the same rate as each other. However, within specifications, they did keep accurate enough time uh, based on Casio's claims. So here's a whole box full of variations of the AWG M100 watch. Now, they all use the same module, so in theory, they would all be just as accurate as each other. However, not quite. What I found was, and I, and I kind of organized them here from the most accurate down to the least accurate, and out of these AWG M100 watches, what I found were that uh, 
the least accurate ones were between 11 and 13 seconds. So four of these were within, you know, between 11 and 13 seconds off. The next three were within nine or 10 seconds. The next three were somewhere between five and seven seconds off. And actually, these are a couple of the most recent ones I got. These, uh, these two here were uh, less than four seconds wrong after a month. So pretty good. Again, in theory, you'd think they'd all be the same. Some variation there from about four seconds a month off all the way up to 13 seconds a month off. All, however, within specifications. All right, next up in this box, I have three different modules present here. Uh, some of these nice G-Shock square watches that everybody likes so well. These are different from each other, look different, maybe even were made in different factories, but they all have the same module uh, that Casio has. So uh, let me, let's see, what were my results with these G-Shock squares? The worst one here was off by eight seconds in a month. Two of these were off by just seven seconds a month. Uh, one of them here was off by six seconds in a month. And the two best ones were off by about three and a half seconds after one month of use. So not bad. Uh, not necessarily, you know, the, 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 this one that right in the middle here is the cheapest one. And uh, so, so the price doesn't necessarily predict that it's going to be the most accurate one. This is the most expensive one and it was still uh, three and a half seconds uh, accuracy, you know, in very close to this other one, which costs a little bit less. So, you know, but again, not bad results. Okay, the next, I've got nine examples, uh, variations of the, the M500 or the M530 watch. Okay, so out of those, the worst one was off by 11 and a half seconds, more or less. Then I had a couple that were off by mm, about seven seconds, one that was off by five, I had uh, three of them were off by four seconds. The best two of these were off by, this one was off by about, I figure, I was counting the frames on the video of my test. It was about 1.7 seconds. And uh, this one here, a close second, uh, was only off by two seconds. So still really quite impressive, I think. Now the next ones, um, these all use the same module. And uh, well, some of them I bought from the Japanese market. One of them I got from the uh, US market. So all of them analog watches using the same module. And uh, well, the results I got here varied from, uh, let's see, as, as inaccurate as 15 seconds and uh, as good as seven seconds for the month. So, okay, finally, uh, let's look at this, this box here. And these are kind of my odds and ends in this box here. So what do I have? Well, these are kind of more of my budget watches. Well, uh, let's see, I've got here, these are variations of the MTG M900. Actually, I start with the, uh, the older model, which is not the multiband model, the MTG 900. And uh, again, the MTG 900 was off by 22 seconds, uh, but these other ones were actually, one of them uh, was off by just four and a half seconds, and the other two, we're off by eight seconds. So not bad for those guys there. Now here's a couple of uh, pretty watches and at one time or another, these were actually available at Sam's Club. Uh, they use different modules, although they look like they have the same readout, which shows you um, the time and the tide. Okay, so, so these tide watches, not bad. This one was off by five seconds and this one, which costs a little bit more and looks a little fancier, was off by three and a half seconds. So not much variation there. Pretty watches and pretty accurate watches. Okay, so uh, next, um, the last of my uh, kind of, you know, atomic radio controlled watches in this experiment. Uh, actually, there are three different modules between these five watches. And they're, they're, they're budget watches, so they're only advertised to be accurate within 20 seconds, not 15. However, they did fine. The least accurate one was off by 13 seconds. The next most accurate one was uh, off by eight seconds. Then this one was off by just four seconds. This one next to it, which was one of the cheapest ones you can get, off by just 3.75 seconds or so. And then uh, this one here was off by only about one and a quarter seconds after one month of no atomic time reception. The last five that I wanna to mention to you 
are kind of the variations on um, this one here. Uh, people like this one because it looks kind of like a James Bond watch, and that's why they call it the Casio Royale. Uh, this, is a, this is an inexpensive watch, and it's only said to be accurate to within 30 seconds a month. But what did this one really do? Well, the actual accuracy on this one was seven seconds. Seven seconds a month. Now, the good news is that even though it was off by seven seconds, the other ones actually performed better than that. Except there was one out of all of these, there was just one that actually ran slower than real time. Still within specifications, this one here was slow by 12 seconds after a month. So, I don't know. I don't know why all the others ran fast except this one. We'll see. Maybe I could check it again in a few years and see what happens. So, anyway, not bad here. But, uh, but these three right here, I'm telling you, these are the cheapest ones out of this whole collection. So, what happened was I went to a Walmart and they were doing some closeouts on watches. And see, these are normally like 20 bucks each. And they were selling them for like... 10 or $11 each, right? So how did they do? This one here, after one month, was wrong by 2.6 seconds. And it was one of the cheapest ones in this collection. This orange one here was off by one and a half seconds after a whole month. 10-year battery, off by one and a half seconds a month. I'm telling you. And then this one here, <laughs> the grand prize winner, uh, of the bunch, only slightly, this one was only slightly better than, um, than, than this one here, which again was not expensive, relatively speaking. And this one was off by, I figured about one and one sixth seconds. I was trying to, was trying to, you know, do like a photo finish on video. Yeah, one and one sixth seconds per month on this watch that cost about $10 when I bought it at a closeout Walmart thing. So, not bad, the, the resin black version of the Casio Royale. <laughs> the most accurate watch of all of these if you don't cheat by using radio control on uh, some of your little, little more pricier watches. So, all right, that's what happens to quartz watches when you let them run for a whole month without any kind of um, correction. And of course, I, I use most of these, I have them set so that they do the little hourly chime, you know, just a little beep every hour. And so after a month when they weren't synchronized anymore, it sounded like this. So I went ahead and manually synchronized uh, the ones that needed to be manually synchronized and I made sure that the others all had their radio receivers turned back on so they could automatically calculate their, their, their own accuracy with the, uh, with the atomic time. And so after they were all synchronized to atomic time again, this is what they sounded like when we reached the top of the hour. And isn't that fun? Aren't you so glad someone figured out how to use stuff like this to make fun clocks that you can wear on your wrist? Uh, now this one I didn't test. Hey, oh no, this is a new one. I'm gonna make another video and give you a full review on this guy, because, uh, well, it's new and I haven't ever talked about a watch quite like this uh, yet. So, so please stay tuned for yet another episode coming soon of the Good Timekeeping Show, and thanks for watching today.